Welcome to Young. I'm Pastor Gio, and I'm so excited to be here with you. Have you ever failed an exam and you feel down the entire day? Maybe all you need was some encouragement. Well, this week, we're going to learn about what God told Paul to tell the church when they needed some encouragement. But before we check it out, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we just thank you, Lord, that you are a source of our encouragement, that you love us no matter what. Teach us today, give us, our, give us wisdom, Lord, and open our hearts and minds to receive your word. In Jesus' name, bless it this day. Amen. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 38 and 39. When Paul wrote his famous letters to the believers in Rome, he declared an incredible truth. I am absolutely sure that not even death or life can separate us from God's love. That not even angels or demons, not present or future, or any other powers can separate us. Not the highest places or the lowest or anything in all creation can separate us. Nothing at all can ever separate us from God's love. That's because of what Christ Jesus, our Lord, has done. Now, let's see how this truth might play out in our lives today. Ben Martin stared hard at the page of his book, trying to force the letters to stay in place. Jason stepped through the gate. He br he drew. Oh. Tearing off his glasses, Ben hurled them onto the bed, rubbing his aching eyes. His mom's voice floated from downstairs. Everything okay? Yeah, fine. Ben picked up his book again and tried once more to focus. He drew. Br <laughs> rift. <sighs> it was useless. Words and letters shifted, traded places with the lines above and below. This is totally impossible. Ben slammed the book down and stalked out of his room and down the stairs. In the kitchen, Mom was making lunch. How's the book? Great, awesome, fantastic. If you're stuck, Mr. Spinelli said that it's okay to- I'm gonna be the only one in sixth grade who hasn't made it through a single book on the summer reading list. Ben, you know this has nothing to do with how smart you are. Ben shoved open the back door without hearing the rest of Mom's pep talk. Tell your brother it's almost time for lunch. Ben found his brother Ty in the backyard. Wow, fence is looking good. Ty was home for a month before his last year of college. He was such a good carpenter that his dad was paying him to build a new backyard fence. <laughs> yeah. Lunch ready? Almost. Ben rode into the hammock strong between two oak trees and stared into the leaves. The shifting lights and shadows reminded him of the jumping letters in his book. He squeezed his eyes shut. You finished Jason's game yet? No, because I'm the world's slowest reader. Uh, not true. It's just the... Uh... Uh, dyslexia, yeah, I know. Ben's parents were finally relieved to have a diagnosis that explains Ben's trouble in school. But for Ben, dyslexia seemed like a giant weight pinning him down. I kept thinking that maybe one day it would just all click into place, that, that reading would just happen like it does for everybody else. But now I know it's never going to be easy. Dyslexia makes it take forever to learn. Mm. Lots of people with dyslexia do amazing things. It's easy for you to say you're perfect at everything. <laughs> Pound a few nails. You'll feel better. Ty held out a hammer and gestured toward a nail sticking out of a newly placed picket. Ben shrugged out of the hammock and took the hammer. Keep your eye right on the nail head. Yeah. Did mom ever tell you I almost dropped out of college first semester freshman year? What? <laughs> no. Yeah, I made some really mm, unwise choices. I was failing classes and I knew mom was worried and dad was super mad. And I felt completely worthless. Ben forgot about the hammer and gave the tie in amazement. No way, you're the smartest guy I know. Hmm. I was just gonna quit, but I had this friend on my hall, Leo, and he wouldn't leave me alone. He just kept telling me that no matter how much of a zero I felt like, I was still loved by God. That nothing I do and nothing that happens can ever change that. Huh. 
So that just fixed stuff? <laughs> nope. But Leo kept showing up, and I finally started reading some of the verses he gave me just to get him off my back, and it started to sink in. Ty took out his phone and tapped a few times. Mm, here's my favorite one. Ty started to hand over his phone, but saw Ben wince. I'll read it. I am absolutely sure that not even death or life can separate us from God's love. Not even angels or demons, the present or the future or any powers can separate us. Not even the highest places or the lowest or anything else in all creation can separate us. Nothing at all can ever separate us from God's love. That's because of what Christ Jesus, our Lord, has done. Ben swapped the hammer from one hand to the other and back again. I think I've heard that before. It's kind of wild with all the angels and demons and stuff. Yeah, it's different when you put yourself in it. I am absolutely sure that no dumb choice or failing grade or feeling worthless now or ever can make God stop loving me. Like fill in the blank. Yeah, sure. Ben took a couple good wax at the nail until it was pounded firmly in place. So I am um, absolutely certain that dyslexia and feeling worthless and summer reading lists. None of that can make God stop loving you. Now or ever. Yeah. Okay. Somehow, Ben felt a little lighter. What do you think of Jason's game? Oh, it's awesome. Other than the reading part. <laughs> Ty tapped on his phone again. I'm buying you the audiobook. Then you can listen while you read. Cool. Thanks. I'm hungry. The two brothers headed inside for lunch. For once, Ben wasn't worried about the year ahead. In fact, he was looking forward to getting back to his book. Wow, you see, God loves us no matter what. Even when we fail an exam, He gives us encouragement and comfort whenever we need it. Why? Well, it's because He's an amazing Father. Now, it's time for a key passage. Today's key passage is taken from Romans 8, verse 38 to 39. It says, For I am convinced that neither death or life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Great job, kids! It's quiz time! Are you ready, kids? Let's get right into it. Question 1. Who loves us more than anything in this world? God or our friends? That's right, it's God! Question 2. Who sent a letter to leaders in Rome? Is it Paul or Maria? Did you answer Paul? That's correct! Last question. Who wrote the book of Romans? Was it Paul or was it John? Did I hear Paul? That is excellent! Correct! Great job, kids! Well, that's it for today, kids. Thank you for spending your Sunday with us. Remember, we have our weekly contents on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And we'll see you in our Zoom classes later this afternoon. Before we go, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that we had such a great time in our class. Bless this day. Bless our parents. Bless our family. Bless our, our friends. Bless our city, Lord. Heal us. Give us comfort in Jesus' name. And everyone say, Amen. Bye, kids.